Our own Hayato Huseman took a look at Huawei's international flagship for this half of 2015, the Huawei P8. The Chinese manufacturer has ascended a long way from its earlier products, with help from a hefty digital appetite in its home market, not to mention swelling competition. But while China reaches smartphone saturation, companies over there are now looking for how to take the scene over to the West, and thus, North America. Huawei's made the investment in Canadian headquarters, but they've kept from releasing their best work onto our shelves. How deep does Huawei's Western footprint go with the Huawei P8 Lite? I'm Jules Wong with Pocket Now. Let's find out in our video review. We talk about glass sandwiches and plastic slabs in our industry. It's funny here because Huawei opted to endow the P8 Lite with a plastic sandwich build. The top and bottom white layers are matte, the bottom designed with a brushed metal motif in mind. The glistening sparkles are a nice touch, and furthermore, look ma, no fingerprints. The chromed mid plate features a bit of that brushed texture too, and it contributes to the overall tactile feel. You can pick it up, scratch it up a bit, and not worry up a storm. It's not durable, but it's resilient. Flipping the phone over, one of my favorite quirks is the color notification LED on top right, next to the proximity sensor. Whatever happened to those? Our US device shows off a 5-inch 720p LTPS LCD. There's adequate saturation, but it looks like subpixels have been poorly arranged. I mean, look at this white screen. Sure, it looks fine here, but turn it this way and there's more of a blue tint. Back the other way around and we see a yellow hue, representing the green and red elements. Blacks aren't as deep as even comparable LCDs can produce, and the below average brightness and some major reflectivity issues also add on to the problem pile. This is not going to be a display for sunbathers or for sharing pictures, and even beyond that, forget pixel density here. If a display can be as inconsistent in color production as this one can, we'd have doubts about using it for prolonged anything. Media consumption, gaming, etc. Inside, we're looking at the 64-bit Snapdragon 615 from Qualcomm, which has become a pretty popular mid-range SoC. There's 2 gigs of RAM and a one-size-fits-all 16 gigabytes of internal storage, only expandable by up to 32 gigabytes through microSD. Though, if you do go through with the extra space, Keep note that the P8 Lite is a dual SIM device. In the US, the case might be that a two-carrier situation isn't necessary or common at all, but for all it's worth, you should know that there's a dedicated micro SIM slot and a shared nano SIM and micro SD card space. There is an oddity in that you can clearly see the display's backlight illumination from the micro SIM slot's keyhole, which could signal, number one, that the backlight's distance from the rest of the LCD is contributing to the visibility problems. And number two, there could be some instant trouble with water if it gets into the wrong places. So this also isn't a beach phone. Watch out. A stripped down version of Emotion UI 3 on top of Android 4.4.4, not Lollipop, has made its way to the West. By stripped down, I don't mean that the aesthetics, the endless app screens, and the software redundancies are gone. They aren't. But what is, is the extensive theming capability and access to a theme store. You're only given a few ways to spice up your home screen and even fewer options to customize other interface aspects. Also gone are the knuckle gestures and pull-up toggles. And while one-handed usability is still here, for a 5-inch phone and apparently only in the dialer, it might not be as useful here. The quick toggles are varied, many, and of course, rearrangeable. The notification shade contains allow or deny prompts for further pressures next to first time notices. Occasionally, you'll be notified of battery sapping apps which you can choose to close. Notifications and power savings can both be managed from within the settings too. This being the Huawei P8 Lite, we'd like to think of this as MUI Lite. Take that for what you will. A finger of glass serves as the headhouse for a 13 megapixel BSI sensor from Sony, along with a single LED flash. While it sounds kinda close to the P8 Lite's flagship sibling, the Lite lacks OIS and doesn't use Sony's RGBW technology. Shooting with the P8 Lite, again, minding outdoor conditions with the display, is pretty neat. 
Huawei didn't take every bit of fun out of the diet phone. There's an all-focus mode, which does what you would expect it to do, a well-done panorama function, and some other standard fancy stuff. The pictures, and selfies, themselves range from alright to washed out. Hues trend cool, and high contrast scenarios can really mess with the processing, sometimes to hilarious detriment. Take a look at this HDR picture, and this one as well. And here's the XF data to prove that they're both different ones. While it may be in a couple of cases that some terrible exposure interpretation happens, the processing in general certainly cripples the camera's ability to take a decent picture, especially when you might be relying on HDR for fairly common outdoor conditions. Lack of proper contrast and saturation also rule in low light. In 1080p video, exposure is just as jumpy as the footage. Rolling shutter also contributes to the con side, and the mic pickup in a light breeze just doesn't seem to cut it. So I'm about two feet away from the camera, from the phone itself. Hopefully the mic is picking my voice up over the sea breeze. Nice sea breeze today. The V8 light can really chug on itself sometimes. Generally, the typical light loads like social media browsing, video watching, and web reading are taken on just fine. By the way, the P8 Lite, just like the P8, has a single 1 watt speaker on the bottom left of the device, despite some deceiving grills down there. And yes, it's just as easily muffled as it is on the P8. That may detract from your gaming experience, as they take more of a toll anyways, with symptoms of choppiness, delayed tap recognition, and most importantly, power drain. My initial assessment in battery life turned out to be just one side of the power coin. After further testing, I found out on lighter days, the P8 managed superbly on standby, going on 18 hours unplugged. Unfortunately, it only manages about 4 hours of screen on time over any given time off the charger, in some cases as low as 12 hours. Now, keeping in mind that this is a 2200mAh battery, this should be expected in a mid-range device. But Huawei decided to promote how their LTPS display results in 20-30% better power efficiency. In LCD technology, LTPS is, indeed, better for battery life than other TFT materials, but that, on the whole, is another discussion. What doesn't jive with me is the fact that the display can take up a whopping 40% of the battery on any given day, like other phones. And when you end up having to crank the brightness up to the max when you're outside, you can see how that effectively washes away any efficiency benefits. Testing the phone in Greater Boston on AT&T, we found decent LTE speeds nearly everywhere we went. There's a silver lining here, and it comes to call quality, which testers deemed better than average with adequate noise cancellation in louder environs. But there are few silver linings to the Huawei P8 Lite that keep it from falling below our recommendation threshold, especially when there are better options in the US market at the $250 price point right now. So we find ourselves asking Huawei, one of China's commercial achievements, what business does it want to do in the West? Can it do better for a demanding marketplace? Should we even consider Huawei as a serious player here? I didn't think we'd be asking these questions right here, but given the circumstances, with cell carriers changing the model of their business and ever-improving budget smartphones from more OEMs, shouldn't Huawei try harder? Our full text review of the Huawei P8 Lite will come shortly on pocketnow.com. In the meantime, if you like what you just saw, please thumb up this video and subscribe to Pocket Now on YouTube. I'm Jules Wong at Greenpoint Zero on Twitter. I'll see you soon.